Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today, I'm going to be summarizing an interesting lecture delivered by the European Federation of Periodontology as part of their Europerio series, looking specifically at orthodontics and periodontitis. Now, there was a series of lectures given. The main one is by an orthodontist, Sparadon Papa Giorgio, who's an eminent orthodontic academic based in Austria. And by the way, far younger than I thought he'd be. And to recap, the podcast is an opinion piece of myself and may not be 100% accurate or representative, although we try our best to ensure that it is. It is not endorsed by the speaker or by institute and is the independent work of myself and the orthodontics in summary team. So what is stage 4 periodontitis? Well, this was defined in the workshop from 2017, and this is really looking at where clinical attachment loss has been 5 millimeters or greater, significant bone loss quantified by loss of up to the mid-third of the root, and a malocclusion which has formed directly related to the loss of periodontal support. This can appear in a multitude of ways. Patients have bite collapse, and that's where there's lack of posterior support, resulting in tooth movement in the direction of a force. Over eruption can take place, drifting of teeth due to masticatory forces, hypermobility, secondary to occlusal trauma. Now, what I found was interesting is that when patients have then stabilised their periodontal health, this movement carries on taking place. A paper by Zhang in 2017 showed a third of periodontally stable patients had further tooth movement taking place over a period of two years. And the best term that was coined for this was orthodontic pathogenic tooth movement. The fact that we've lost periodontal support, things are still subject to change within the mouth. What treatment is given to these stage 4 periodontal patients? Well, in the periodontal world, there is a staged system of treatment, starting off with supragingival debridement, proceeding to subgingival debridement, and adding in any surgical treatment. And generally, that seems to be barrier membrane treatment and enamel matrix derivative treatment for the stage 4 patients when they have localized bony defects. Now, I must admit, I was a bit envious here of the Periodontal Federation having such clear guidelines as to how treatment should take place and feeling, well, wouldn't it be great if we had something similar within orthodontics? Now, moving on to the very much more orthodontic side of the lecture series, looking at the effects of orthodontics on the periodontium itself. Now, Papa Giorgio has done a number of systematic reviews on this in 2018 and again in 2021. What it generally shows is that orthodontics has a transient effect on the microbiology of the periodontium. Bone loss and clinical attachment loss are really of small values, less than half a millimetre. Recession is an interesting one. There appears to be a significant amount of recession possible, but a large variation. And it seems to be up to 1.9 millimetres, mostly localising itself to patients who are hyperdivergent in their nature of a large cranial base angle, which I thought was interesting. Fixed versus aligners, always a lot of controversy on this topic. Papa Giorgio stated only one paper really looked at this, and it was a small study, so he was a bit dubious of the results, but seemed to show fixed appliance in favour of aligners. Guided tissue regeneration, it seems to be an inconsistent benefit to patients, so it's still a bit unclear about that. When orthodontic treatment finishes, what happens to these patients who have had periodontal periodontal disease previously? But interestingly, they still undergo periodontal attachment loss of 0.3 millimeters. Now, what's interesting is that that's considered to be normal maturation of the periodontium and not associated with their orthodontic intervention. When it comes to follow-ups during orthodontic treatment by the periodontal team, well, having reviews at one or three months seems to have a significant improvement. However, at six months, there doesn't seem to be a significant improvement. And that's by Jang in 2021. So really, patients should be seen every one to three months. Spirodon then went on to speak about the periodontal patient's biomechanics when having orthodontic treatment. He described how the center of rotation moves apically. And there's been a number of papers which have simulated this taking place. There was Ket and Bell in 2013 and Baghdadi in 2019. And they, what they showed was is that the center of rotation moved apically by two to three millimeters. 
Now, this resulted in an increase in tooth movement of up to 2.5 times that of patients who do not have periodontally compromised attachment support. And also the strain in the periodontium was much higher, of between 1.4 to 2 times as great. And this could result in harm to the periodontal support tissues. Now, when it comes to intrusion, a really interesting paper by Melson in 2017 showed in the light of good hygiene and poor hygiene, different things do take place when applying intrusion. In poor oral hygiene, there is no more attachment formation that takes place. However, for the patient with good oral hygiene and intrusion biomechanics happening, actually new attachment formation does take place. Still a question mark whether it's long junction epithelium or not, but it's interesting nonetheless. When it comes to retention, what Spirod had mentioned is that generally fixed retainers do offer biocompatibility and do allow some physiological movement to take place. So theoretically, they are fine. However, we don't know the effects of this on mobile teeth. It's still a big unknown. There are greater failure rates associated with bonder retainers in the more severely periodontally compromised patients who have now become stable. And the final finding relates to a long-term follow-up study of 10 years. And it showed that patients who had undergone orthodontics and periodontal treatment had no significant recession that had occurred. However, they did have an increase in the root fracture rates. So although we're able to position the teeth into the ideal location, there's still an increase in relative forces due to the reduced connective tissue on these patients. Spirodon's conclusions are that orthodontics does not negatively compromise the periodontal support. For when it comes to appliances, segmental mechanics are better than continuous appliances, also adapting our biomechanics, taking into account the reduction in the position of the centre of rotation. Fixed may be better than aligners, although there's still not any conclusive evidence comprehensively. We should have support for our orthodontic patients who have had periodontal loss previously by seeing the periodontal team every one, two, three months. Retention should be employed after orthodontic treatment, but we do have greater failure rates. And overall, we still have very limited evidence on this topic. But I look forward to seeing the work by Spirodon and the team in answering these questions about orthodontics and the periodontal patient. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.